Hi, welcome to Ride Alongside. Today we're talking about my favorite stoves for bike packing and for backpacking. There's four different types that I want to discuss here. The first being canister stoves, second is alcohol stoves, third is white gas, and the fourth is a solid fuel stove. All right, first up is the canister stove. This one is from Fohas and it's relatively inexpensive. You can find it for less than $20 for sure, usually less than $15. So it's a stove that threads onto a canister. These canisters come in four, eight, and 16 ounce sizes. And they're my favorite for social gatherings, uh, quick boil, uh, they're convenient, pretty light, and they're good for three seasons, and they're really simple. You just turn them on, the gas comes out, and you light it up, and then you can turn it off whenever you're ready. So some of the pros to the canister stove are that it is pretty cheap, it's pretty lightweight, it's uh, good for just quick boils, which is what most people are going to use these for, for backpacking and bikepacking and it's very simple uh, it also these canisters fit into one of these cups so whether it's this titanium uh, pot like i reviewed the 750 milliliter pot um, or one of these simple gsi stainless steel uh, cups it fits into most of them really nicely i'm speaking of all-in-one systems jet boil and other companies are making canister based uh, stoves in an all-in-one system. They use less fuel and they're more efficient because their uh, cups have a um, heat diffuser and a, a um, heat reflector and a windscreen all built in one. So it actually saves you, they say approximately five to 10 grams um, per trip uh, because you're using, you're having to use less fuel. Uh, so that's a good um, pro to those systems. The cons are that they're expensive and they're heavy. So um, having a nice lightweight stove like this uh, can be versatile. You can use it with a variety of systems. All right, next up is the alcohol stove. So these are made out of uh, aluminum cans. You can make them from home. There's all different types of designs. You can uh, have a design that you sit the pot uh, directly on top of or the mug or whatever it is that you're boiling the water in or cooking out of. Um, they're super lightweight, pretty much the lightest weight stove out there. And they use denatured alcohol, but you can also use gas line antifreeze, this heat um, stuff. It uh, tends to work pretty well. The pros to the alcohol can stove are that it is the lightest weight stove, like I said. It's pretty simple and pretty re readily available fuel. The cons to these stoves, there's, there's actually quite a few. Um, it's not as convenient as other stoves out there like the canister stove, uh, even the white gas stove. Um, it's a little bit more of a hassle there. Um, they are banned in some fire prone areas because it's really hard to put them out once they get going. So that's part of the convenience uh, thing is that you have to know how much fuel you want to put in there. And then if it goes out, you got to refill it and then relight it. So. Uh, that's part of it. They're also not very good for cold weather, uh, just like a canister stove. Um, and then the real cooking long term, uh, like over uh, more than 10 day trips, which is kind of long, uh, they're not going to be as weight advantageous as a canister stove or other options um, because you're going to have to carry a lot of that denatured alcohol with you and it's not all that efficient uh, compared to other stoves out there. All right, next up is the white gas stove. So these stoves, you need to bring a canister of white gas with you. It's a liquid gas. And uh, then you pump up the uh, canister and it comes out this line into the stove and uh, then you light it up. Uh, these are um, my favorite stove for winter, for when I'm cooking with uh, a bigger group and um, also, if I'm planning to do a really long-term bikepacking or backpacking trip, uh, these are ideal. Um, I wouldn't bring these on a three-season uh, camp out unless I'm cooking for a lot of people and we're sharing the weight of the fuel uh, and the stove, uh, but uh, they're really good for those situations. So, 
the pros to the white gas stove is very quick cooking, uh, very quick boiling, very quick to melt snow. Uh, so it's a very, very hot stove uh, usually. Uh, there's a bunch of different models. Um, they also, there's also uh, models like the Primus Omnifuel that I have that you can run on other liquid fuels like diesel and kerosene and other uh, liquid fuels, gasoline, um, like you'd put in your car. But most of them, uh, even if they do run on multiple fuels, run best on white gas and many just run on white gas. Um, they're also very good in low temperature situations and they're very good at high altitude. So you'll see a lot of people who do mountaineering and, and stuff like that will end up carrying one of these even though they're a lot heavier. All right, so what are the cons to the white gas stove? Well, number one, it's heavy. Number two, they're very expensive compared to other alternatives like the alcohol stove you can make out of a can that you have in your recycling. Um, and then number three, they um, mostly only take white gas, which it can be harder to find uh, than other fuel types out there. All right, next is the solid fuel stove. So this is an Esbit stove. Uh, you can get these for about nine bucks, I think, and they come with a few of these, I think maybe four of these uh, Esbit solid fuel tabs. And you basically open these up out of uh, this um, plastic and, and foil, and then you put it right on uh, the center of the, the tray there and you light it up and then it's kind of got a pot stand built into it that you can uh, expand out. These uh, I really like for short or long-term trips where uh, you want a lightweight stove and you're not looking to resupply these tabs, but you're looking to bring a lot of them with you. They last for maybe like three to five minutes. Um, wind can be a factor on these for sure, as they can with many of these stoves. You, know, you can build a windscreen um, or use a, a rock or a bunch of rocks around it um, and mitigate that. All right, so what are the pros and cons to a solid fuel stove like the Esbit stove? Well, uh, for one, they are uh, lightweight. Uh, the, this stove isn't as lightweight as the alcohol stove, but you can actually take an alcohol stove if you want to use a solid fuel tab turn it upside down and you can put the, the S bit right in the bottom of the can. So you could even uh, make it simpler where you don't even need to make this alcohol stove with the holes and the, all of the different features of it, but uh, you can just use the bottom of a, of a Coke can and just put it right in there, light it up uh, and you got your stove. So it, it can be one of the lightest uh, weight stoves out there. And these, um, tend to be a little bit more efficient than the denatured alcohol in the alcohol stoves. Now that's somewhat debatable among ultralight backpackers. Some people say that you can design a alcohol uh, can stove that's more efficient than the Esbit tab. Um, but uh, I found that these work well, they're a little bit more convenient, and they seem to be more efficient from uh, everything I've seen. Um, so. Uh, what are the cons of the solid fuel stoves? Well, number one is price. These tabs are around 35 cents a piece, so if you're looking at 10 burns, that's $3.50. Now, that's not a ton of money, but it is more than most of these other options. So that's something to think of. The other thing is resupply. These aren't found everywhere. So you'll be able to find denatured alcohol, canister stoves, white gas, probably more readily available than these. Not everybody stocks these, even outfitters don't stock these fuel tabs. So something to keep in mind. The other thing is that they're hard to put out, just like an alcohol stove. Uh, you'll have a hard time putting these out and they are banned in some places that have fire restrictions. All right, so those are my favorite stoves for bike packing and backpacking. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment if you wanna see any further in-depth reviews of any of these stoves. I've got other things to say about durability and efficiency and weight and all that kind of stuff if you guys are interested in it. But this was just an overview of the different types. I know there's uh, some of you guys out there who are looking to get into doing coffee outside or bike packing or 
or uh, stuff like that and are wondering if, uh, if you should get a stove. Uh, the other thing to mention is that you don't need a stove. You can go stoveless. Uh, you could also make it over a campfire. So um, think outside the box. Leave some comments down below and uh, check out the comments to see what other people are using as well. Um, like always, I'm Nick from Ride Alongside. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have more content for you real soon.